All right. Hello, everybody. Good morning from Indianapolis, Indiana. My name is Kelly Sumner, and I am the Director of International Admissions here at IU Indianapolis. We are so happy that you could join us for this webinar this morning. I'm going to take just a minute to make sure we have gone live on all of our platforms. I'm trying to do Instagram, but it's not behaving for me here. Let me try again. Please bear with me for just a second. While I'm doing this, if you haven't already, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat and let us know where in the world you currently are joining us from. It looks like we already have a handful of folks joining from India. Um, I saw Saudi Arabia. I saw Kenya. It's always fun to see what uh, a variety we have in our audience. I'm having Instagram technical difficulties. Sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. All right, let's try this again. Oh, it says you are live. I think it must be working, y'all. We're going to go with it and hope that I actually did it correctly. All right. Sorry about that slight delay there. We will go ahead and get started. So like I said, my name is Kelly Sumner. I'm the Director of International Admissions here at IU Indianapolis, and we are so excited uh, that you're joining us today for our webinar. This is one of a series of webinars that we've been doing this year called Inside IUI Global. And today we have our guest speaker is Sarah Kors. She's one of our faculty members from the Kelly School of Business. So we're so excited to hear what she has to share with us today about real estate. Um, the way the presentation will go is um, we'll start with a brief presentation about IU Indianapolis from me. Um, so that'll be about the first 10 minutes or so. And then um, we'll switch over and hear from Sarah. And we will also have some time at the end for questions and answers. So I just want to point out a few things. There is a chat, so you can feel free to ask questions or type comments in the chat. We are monitoring the chat as we go along, so please feel free to do that. Any questions that you have about IU Indianapolis, about the admissions requirements, and then also any questions that you have for Sarah about her presentation and her expertise in business and real estate. Um, and then after the webinar today, we will be following up within the next couple of days to your email that you used to register for the webinar, we'll be sending your uh, participation certificate. So watch for that. I'll probably be sending those out on Monday. Um, so just keep an eye on your inbox for those to show up as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my slides up here on the screen and I will tell you a little bit about this fabulous place. Um, IU Indianapolis. So Indiana University, Indianapolis. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with us already, but we are actually in the process of an interesting transition right now. Um, our university has been known as IUPUI for the last 54 years, um, but we are actually getting ready to transition to becoming IU Indianapolis. So still the same great university located downtown in the city of Indianapolis in the state of Indiana. Um, we're just going to have a new name and continue to do all the fantastic things we've been doing for the last 54 years here in the capital city of Indiana. 
Um, this picture is one of my favorites, so I always just like to point this out. Um, the picture you can see here on the screen is our canal, which runs through part of our downtown area. It is right next to our campus. This one is a really pretty picture because it's at night, so you can see some of the lights and everything have been turned on. Um, but it's also the location of one of our um, favorite campus traditions here on campus. We have something every September called the regatta, and it is a boat race where student organizations, faculty and staff groups um, come together and race each other in boats down the canal. Um, but it's also a huge festival, a huge opportunity um, to get together with the campus as well as um, the, the city community that comes together for the event. It really is one of the best um, uh, and biggest events that we offer here on campus. So right here in the, in the canal that you can see on the slide. So IU Indianapolis is a large public research institution. Um, and we, like you could see from the picture with the canal, we are located right in downtown Indianapolis. We have about 30,000 students, and we're extremely proud that 7.4% of the total student population are international students. We have over 100 countries represented on campus, and even though we're a large university, we do have about 75% of our classes have less than 30 students. So even though it's a large university, with a lot of students, you're still gonna have an opportunity to get a very personalized education with smaller class sizes, especially in your major classes and your more advanced classes. Because we do have that 13 to one student to faculty ratio you can see on the screen. You're gonna to get to know your faculty. You'll have the opportunity to get to know the other students in your classes and really have an overall excellent educational experience in the classroom. We have all kinds of programs. Like I said, since we're a large university, we have hundreds and hundreds of programs to choose from. Um, some of our most popular programs or programs that we're very well known for are things in STEM. So things like um, the life sciences, physical sciences, computer science. Um, we also have a lot of programs in the health sciences. Um, our university has the largest nursing school and the largest medical school in the country. We actually have four hospitals located on our campus and we have the only dental school in the state of Indiana. So you can imagine lots of things related to healthcare, um, health research, um, all those kinds of things going on here on our campus. We also have one of the top business schools in the whole US, the Kelly School of Business, which you're gonna hear from one of their faculty here in a few moments. Um, and uh, some of those STEM programs I mentioned earlier are located in our Luddy School of Informatics, Computing Engineering. So they have programs um, in computer science, in web design, in game design, um, data science, all kinds of fun programs like that. Um, just a few more kind of numbers for you. Um, since 2020, there's been over 450 internships offered to students in the Kelly School of Business. Um, obviously, many more internships in some of our other schools and departments as well. Um, the Luddy School of Informatics boasts an 88% employment rate for students after they graduate. One of the huge benefits of studying in Indianapolis is that we are number four in the US for high tech job growth. So there's a lot of great opportunities here in the city. And IU Indianapolis is very proud of the fact that we are in the top 10% in the world at, for our ranking and delivering on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So that's something that's um, important to us as an office and also as a campus community and something that um, you would definitely be a part of if you came to join our student body. So I mentioned we have a lot of programs. We have over 400 different program combinations. If you think about all the different majors, but also the minors and specializations that you can um, take when you're here as a student um, on the undergraduate side. Um, we are the only university in the state that has medical, dental, nursing, and law schools all on the same campus, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, in addition to our undergraduate programs, we also have a lot of graduate degrees. So if you're interested in a master's degree, 
a PhD or professional degree, we have a lot of those programs as well. And something kind of to keep in mind if you're a high school student thinking about studying for an undergraduate or a bachelor's degree, we do have quite a few bachelor's to master's degree programs where you could potentially do a four-year bachelor's degree and a two-year master's degree in only five years. So like a four plus one kind of program where you can save yourself a year on your master's program. So that's a pretty cool opportunity. Like I said, we have quite a few of those programs available. Our office, so my team is part of the overall Office of International Affairs here at IU Indianapolis, and we have several units in our office that work with international students. Our international student services team provides support for all international students throughout their degree programs here on campus. You'll have a comprehensive orientation program and welcome services when you join campus. So there's some campus-wide activities as well as some specific uh, support and options for international students to help you get adjusted and feel comfortable here on campus as you get started um, on your academic journey here with us. We have an amazing international peer mentor program. So uh, new international students ma are matched up with one of our peer mentors, and that is another student just like you who's been here for a couple of years and kind of, kind of helps show you the ropes, answer your questions, and just really gives you another resource on campus for somebody to help um, support you and guide you and um, develop new friendships along the way. Um, and our office, the peer mentor program, as well as other folks in our office, um, offer all kinds of events and programs um, around international kinds of topics here on campus to give you an opportunity to meet other people, to learn about Indianapolis, and to get involved here on our campus and in our city. So here's another beautiful view of campus. Everything's not quite green yet, but spring is coming. So it's been raining the last couple of days. So I'm sure campus is gonna, gonna start greening up here in a few minutes, uh, a few days rather. Um, but this is another really pretty view of campus. You can see the, um, the walkway across the road here. This is our campus. And then you can see the skyline of Indianapolis in the background. Um, but the quote here um, from one of our current uh, international students who actually was the peer mentor of the year last year is talking about how much they enjoy the diversity of the city of Indianapolis. And that's one of the amazing things about going to a university that's in a large city is you're part of a, a campus community, but you also are part of the, the community in the city at large. Um, and Indianapolis, while it is a large city, is a very friendly and welcoming place. Um, there's a saying that we have that's called, we say Hoosier hospitality. So a Hoosier, if you didn't know, is somebody who's from Indiana. Um, and so Hoosier hospitality is just um, our way of saying like people in Indiana are very friendly and welcoming um, and really enjoy um, meeting people from all over. And that's one of the nice things about coming to Indianapolis. Sometimes you'll hear Indianapolis referred to as Indy. So that's an abbreviation of Indianapolis. We are known as the Crossroads of America. So we're right in the middle of the United States, which is a nice location. It makes it easy to kind of get to other places in the U.S. We're about a four-hour drive from Chicago, if you're familiar with that. Um, the other advantage, I think, of living and studying in the Midwest, in the middle part of the U.S., is the cost of living is a little bit better. It's a little bit more expensive on the coasts, like the East Coast and the West Coast, compared to the middle part of the U.S. So that's a great advantage. And then the other super amazing thing about studying in Indianapolis is everything is really close by, including opportunities for things like internships. So we definitely stress to students it's not necessarily enough anymore just to study in the classroom alone and get a degree. You really have to go out there and get some experience along the way as well. And so we have opportunities for students. We will help you with finding those internship opportunities and being in the city of Indianapolis. You have large Fortune 500 companies that are located here. We just announced a new co-op program with Eli Lilly, which is one of the largest pharmaceutical manufacturers in the world. Um, as well as like smaller startup tech companies and everything in between. So we really have a lot of 
um, opportunities for students, no matter where their um, interest areas might be. There's also lots of fun things to do. Um, so we're definitely a sports city. We have a lot of professional and semi-professional sports teams. We are the location of the biggest one day sporting event in the entire world, the Indy 500. Um, so the racetrack is actually just a few minutes away from campus. Um, you could also actually walk to the zoo and museums from campus, a lot of fun restaurants. We have the Indianapolis Symphony. There's just um, pretty much unlimited things to do here in the city um, for students. Um, the total cost of attendance here at IU Indianapolis currently is right just a little over $51,000 per year. Um, so you can maybe see the breakdown of the costs here on the slide. This information is also available on our website. We do have two intakes. We have one intake in the fall, which is August, and then we have another intake in the spring, which starts in January. Um, I will say that the majority of students do start in August, but if you'd like to start in January, that's definitely an option. Um, I, you do see something on the screen here about scholarships, and I'm gonna talk about scholarships next. I do like to point out to students that we offer our scholarships for our fall start students only. Um, so if scholarships are important, you probably wanna apply to start in August. Um, and we do offer scholarships to students um, based on their grades. So for undergraduate students, we would be looking at your high school grades, and those range from $5,000 to $10,000 per year. Um, and you will automatically be considered for those awards if you apply by February 15th. So since today is March 9th, unfortunately, we're past the deadline for students who want to start this coming August. But if you happen to be maybe in 10th grade or 11th grade, or you're planning on taking a gap year and you don't want to start until August of 2025, um, then you have basically from August 1st when the applications are open until February 15th to apply and be considered um, for these scholarships. We do also have some higher competitive scholarships that are offered through our Honors College, and those have some additional criteria and deadlines associated with them, and that information is also on our website. In case you are wondering what you need to submit for your application, all you have to do is apply through either our application on our website or through the Common App. You submit your official academic records, so your high school transcripts, exam results, we also need proof of English proficiency, but we do not require SAT or ACT scores. And then once you're admitted, if you're an international student that needs to get a student visa, then we'll ask you for your financial documentation in order to give you that I-20. Looks like we maybe have a couple of questions coming in over on the chat. Do we have sports in the university? We do. We actually have a number of Division I sports. If you want to play the, like competitive sports for the university, um, so all of those fun things are determined by the coaches, but if you are an excellent soccer player, for example, or football, as everyone else in the world calls it, um, you could potentially reach out to our coaches and look into playing one of our sports. Um, but we do also have a lot of student organizations or clubs that are sports related as well. So if you just want to get together with friends and play cricket, for example, we have a cricket club. Um, we have Ultimate Frisbee. I see them out there a lot of times in the field playing when I leave in the afternoon. Um, so there, there are a lot of opportunities to participate in sports and to um, be a spectator in the professional sports that I was mentioning earlier. Um, it looks like there's a question about criteria for scholarships. Um, so essentially, as long as you have the equivalent of a B average or a 3.0 GPA or higher for your high school grades, um, as well as English proficiency, then uh, you would qualify for one of our scholarships. And that information is also on our website. I'm going to have this QR code up here for just a second. So if you'd like to scan this with your phone, um, you can go to, it's what we call our link tree. So it has links to information about scholarships. It has a link to our website. I think it has our social media handles on there. It has all kinds of the most important information kind of combined into one website for you guys. But you can definitely find a lot of other details about 
everything that I talked about and a lot more on the IU Indianapolis website. Um, so somebody asked, when are we going to talk about real estate? That's next. That's right now. So I'm going to go ahead and transition um, to the next part of our webinar here. Um, if you still have questions about IU Indianapolis or questions about admission criteria, please keep putting those into the chat. We'll try to get to those as we go through um, the presentation. And then there will be some time for Q&A at the end as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take my slides off the screen now. And I'm going to turn things over to our amazing uh, faculty speaker today, Sarah Kors. So she is a faculty in our Kelly School of Business specializing in real estate. And we really appreciate her getting up early. It's early on a Saturday morning. Um, so we're really happy that she was willing and able to join us this morning and share her expertise with us. I'll let her do a little bit more um, introduction of herself here. Um, but it's all you, Sarah, if you want to go ahead and take it away for us. Can you add my slides? to? This? Absolutely. Okay. There you go. Hi, everyone. Um, happy to see all of you. Um, I'm Sarah Kors. I am our real estate faculty on the Indianapolis campus. And um, I always like to start um, by telling people that real estate is so much more than just selling houses. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that today. Um, but it's really exciting to be part of our business program, our business school on the Indianapolis campus, because we're right in the heart of downtown Indianapolis, and there's a lot of opportunities for students here. I do want to tell you a little bit more about me. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit from a, a different background than a lot of people expect for someone in business. Um, I actually went to college because I like to read, and um, I was an English major and literature major and got a master's degree in communication. But... Um, I kind of landed in real estate by accident and it really suits my personality because I am a problem solver. I love critical thinking and I love learning new things and real estate really speaks to that. So I was a commercial real estate appraiser for 15 years. So I was behind the valuation of properties um, and I did a lot of really unique things. Um, I was involved in a lot of expert witness testimony. So I was often testifying in court about real estate. I got to study the impact of wind farms on real estate. Um, so I did a lot of really cool things and I've been a full-time instructor. This is my fourth year and I'm a real estate nerd. I love talking about real estate. Um, I love having international students in my classes so that I can learn more about their real estate in their home countries. Um, I We've had students graduate um, in our real estate program from India um, who've taught me a lot about Indian real estate, for example. We've had students from Kuwait and Saudi Arabia and Jordan and I love learning about everything that's going on in those countries. I want to talk to you a little bit more about why you might pursue a business degree at IU Indianapolis. Uh, really, business is the world's economic engine. And um, there's a lot of real world problem solving to be done in the business school. Um, we do a lot of critical thinking and proposing solutions. All of my classes are built around real world uh, case studies and projects. Um, a lot of our students have a leadership or entrepreneurial mindset. It doesn't mean you have to, but a lot of people that really fits them, um, if they want to start their own business or if they want to lead in business. Um, a lot of people like talking to others, networking with others. Our program in particular really caters to networking. Um, lots of opportunities to meet professionals in the industry, which I'll talk more about. And then we do a lot of focus on practical skills that you can apply in the workplace. Um, for example, if you're interested in investment real estate, we're going to spend a lot of time doing the kind of analysis that you would need to do to be a smart investor or to work for an investor. And I'll talk more about that. Uh, so why would you study business and real estate? A lot of people don't realize that you can have multiple majors in um, a university in the U.S. And it's very, very common in the Kelly School of Business that people will have two majors. And in fact, the real estate major is only a co what we call a co-major. It has to become your second major paired with another major. And so it's very, very common. We have a very large and growing program of people who are majoring in one of our primary majors plus real estate. And we actually have had quite a few students graduate with up to three or four majors. So very common here. So you can pursue lots of different interests here. So if you like finance and you also like real estate, you can pursue both, which is really exciting. We have lots of job opportunities, especially in Indianapolis in real estate. Um, we have more real estate employment here than we should have for our population. Um, so it's a very 
dense city in terms of real estate opportunities. And there's a lot of different career paths you can go into. I'll talk more about those. We do a lot of mentoring and shadowing um, opportunities here. So because we're so well connected with our community and because I spend so much time um, bringing people into our classroom, I average about 15 to 20 guest speakers a semester um, where the, they come in and they talk to students and meet with students. It often turns into additional opportunities. We had one student from India go up and speak to one of the guest speakers and it turned into an internship for a whole semester. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities to develop out of those um, guest speakers. You can have community impact and economic development potential. If you want to attend the university in the United States and then go home and help, um, you know, maybe with economic development in your home country or community development, uh, you'll have the opportunity to do that. You could also do it here. Um, you, we have a large range of potential options within real estate. A lot of people get into um, what we call affordable housing, which is um, creating housing that can be afforded by people um, you know, who make lower income and middle income, which is also called workforce housing. Um, there's lots of opportunities to make connections in the industry, as I mentioned. We have a lot of continuous learning and unique projects. Um, we have uh, something called the Commercial Real Estate Workshop that I'll talk more about, where we will actually, over the course of two semesters, you do 10 real world projects. Uh, so really exciting. Um, when you're in the real estate business, you have a lot of flexibility, freedom, creativity. It's a very dynamic work environment. What I liked is uh, it was always changing. I always say real estate's for people who don't want to sit at a desk all day. Um, you're out, out in the world um, working with something physical and tangible. Um, you can walk into a building, see what you have been a part of um, when it gets built or um, if it gets you know renovated or something like that. My students in my one of my classes right now, we gave them two acres of vacant land in downtown Indianapolis, and they just turned into proposals of what they would put there that would work well for the community and also be financially feasible. So that's kind of something we focus on. Our, our main focus is commercial real estate. A lot of people watch YouTube and love to see people flipping houses and investing in houses and wholesaling. And we do talk a little bit about that. But our largest focus is on commercial real estate, which is the bulk of real estate um, in our country. Um, and that's going to be primarily office, retail, um, industrial buildings, hotels, and what we call multifamily, which is largely like apartments and things like that. So we spend a lot of time focusing on these and trying to get to know everything about them that we can. And we really focus on preparing for certain career fields in real estate. Um, a lot of the people that go into our program go into development, which means that they're helping build new real estate or even change existing real estate, maybe tearing buildings down, or maybe they're renovating them or converting them to new uses. Um, we bring in a number of examples here in Indianapolis that are older buildings that have been converted to do, to new things. Uh, we also talk about things like site selection. You know, if you work for a, a big company like Chick-fil-A or um, you know McDonald's or somebody like that, how do you find the ideal site for their next location? Um, rental and for sale housing, uh, like I talked about apartments and flats, that side type of thing. We spend a lot of time talking about that because housing is so important. Um, we do cases regarding brokerage, um, which is how do you negotiate the sales and or leasing of a property? We do, um, some focus on property management and asset management, which is overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of individual buildings or entire portfolios of buildings. Um, we, my expertise is in valuation or appraisal, and we do spend some time talking about valuation because how to knowing what real estate is worth is really um, crucial to understanding um, how it's bought and sold and how it can create wealth. Um, we also have people who pursue real estate law. They go to law school after they finish our program and they can work in different areas of real estate law. Um, we also have people who go into investing with public or private equity. So we do have uh, Simon Property Group here in Indianapolis, which is the world's largest retail real estate investment trust. And um, so we have a lot of students work there. In fact, they've become one of the top employers for Kelly School of Business Indianapolis just through hiring through our real estate program because we they have so much interest um, in our students. Um, and that's a public uh, company. And we also have private equity companies that come and work with our classes. We have students, a lot of students go into banking, um, lending on real estate. 
And I know that um, the debt markets or what's available to borrow like mortgages, it varies across many different countries. And so we talk a lot about how it works here in the United States and then how it might be different from where you might be from. And then, of course, consulting, there's all kinds of different aspects of real estate that people don't realize exist until they get into our program, such as property tax consulting, which, you know, doesn't sound terribly exciting, but we actually do a, a case with that. It's actually a lot of fun. It's really more about arguing than anything. So if you really love to debate, that's a great field for you. So here at IU Indianapolis, the way our program is set up is because we're a double major, it is 15 credit hours of specialized courses in real estate markets, financial analysis. We spend we, one whole class focusing on investing, um, another class focusing on valuation and development. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time developing your financial analysis skills and also your market analysis skills. So you understand why real estate works well in some places and not in others. You may have heard the phrase location, location, location. Um, the location of real estate tells a lot about its success or potential for success. And we really talk about how do you figure that out? How do you understand markets? And a lot of people are surprised to find out that real estate is highly psychological. The way people behave around real estate has a lot to do with what we think and feel and how we perceive things. And so, for example, in the United States right now, the use of office is really changing um, because people really want modern offices with coffee shops and you know great places to hang out while they're working. And that's really changing the landscape of the office market. We have billions and billions of dollars of real estate that has to change to adapt to the psychology of the market. We have a very active real estate club. In fact, yesterday, we just went on a site tour of a new development that has retail and apartments and a parking garage um, in one of our uh, neighboring cities. Um, we have guest speakers come in and they always spend about a half hour after um, each meeting where they present about their companies and what they do. They'll talk to students and individually connect with them. Uh, we have networking events. Uh, we had one in February where there was a bunch of professionals who came in and talked to students and helped guide their career choices and um, help them find internships and that sort of thing. Um, so you'll get, we have two uh, real estate career fairs every year. So just dedicated to real estate jobs and internships where you can come meet people and try and get internships and jobs. Uh, the commercial real estate workshop capstone is part of that 15 credit hours. It is for business majors at our school and it is the best real world experience that I can um, really hope for my students. Um, they develop a portfolio of projects to show employers and our students who come out of our program, employers say they have the equivalent of one to two years of experience just from this experience alone. Um, so they're going to do, uh, they have two eight week classes, once in the fall and once in the spring, where they're going to do five projects each with one week turnarounds. So it's very, very fast paced, but you are learning a lot on the fly. Um, I'm not actually lecturing in that class. I'm not sitting up and talking. Every week I brief students on the new case and then they have to figure out how to solve the problem and present back to the person who brought them the case or the real problem um, in one week. And so one of the last ones we just did was a um, an office building that was mostly vacant. It was a historic office building built in the 1920s. And so it had beautiful architecture and the it's right in the heart of downtown Indianapolis near our circle, which is in the center of the city. And they had to figure out what to do with it. How do they transform this or advise the client on what to do with it? And it was a real deal. This was something that the broker was actively working on and was honestly seeking ideas for his client. And so our students got to give him feedback and ideas to take back to his client. Um, our students also regularly compete in case competitions. Um, again, that's a chance to build their skills and they also win money, get great resume experience. We had a group win a big case competition this fall and that was really exciting. They won $5,000 that they got to split between four of them and they had a great experience and all of them had a lot of job opportunities as a result of that because employers view that as really important to the resume. And like I said, we have real estate career fairs. We have other real estate programming where we'll bring in professionals to do panels, talk to students. We have um, an actual, what we call an alumni conference. It's for real estate students only every year um, where we bring in 
uh, it, it turns out to be about 20 professionals who speak to students. We do resume and interview help. Uh, we have all kinds of individual connection and help available for students. I spend a lot of time with students. Um, I have office hours every single day of the week, and I will someday spend four or five hours talking to students back to back, um, helping them with their career goals, um, helping them with projects, helping them with assignments, just talking to them. I have some students, I had one student, um, he was one of our international students. He would come once a week just to talk about real estate, um, just kind of get nerdy. And that was a lot of fun. So um, we have great connections. It's a very strong community. Um, and everybody in our program is very close knit and friendly with each other because they spend so much time together. Um, so you can really expand your skill set by choosing one of our main majors and adding on real estate. So finance and real estate is very common. Um, this is people who are really interested in doing the financial part of real estate. Maybe you want to determine what buildings get purchased by an investor. With how, when do they sell? Um, do they make? How do they make decisions about whether to develop or not to develop new buildings? Uh, because of the interest rate environment in the United States right now, a lot of buildings are not getting built and people are finding creative ways to do new development. And so we've had a lot of industry speakers um, into the classroom this year so far. I think we've had 14 um, who have come and already talked to students about what's going on today in the markets and how they're making decisions. Accounting and real estate is another common uh, pairing. And these are people who most of the time are going to work within a real estate company, but they're going to do account real accounting. So it's um, a lot of times they're overseeing budgets, um, construction projects, making high level investment decisions based on how properties are performing financially. We also have a lot of marketing and real estate students. These are the people who really like to sell. Um, they like to give input on how to better design new buildings. Um, so they may be the people who are out there understanding the market and the people who are going to use the buildings and giving feedback to the people who are developing them. And then management and real estate, these are our people who have a real instinct to lead um, or are very entrepreneurial and they want to start their own real estate business or they want to be able to become an investor and work on their own. And they um, will start, you know, generally in a more entrepreneurial side of the profession. So here's just some of the class projects that we do. Um, these are actual projects that we've done. We had one where um, there was, we had uh, a lot of acreage. Um, so over 200 acres um, of agricultural land. So it was being farmed and it was out east of Indianapolis and it had been rezoned to allow for industrial development and students were proposing um, large scale developments um, with combination, this one, you can kind of see the students actually made this site plan. It's a combination of industrial buildings and also housing for the people who work in those buildings. Um, then the one next to it, this was an office building. It's right on the south side of downtown that had very high vacancy. And it was an old industrial building that had been converted. And so it was really hard to convert it to things like apartments. So they had to strategize about what do we do with this building? Do we tear it down? Do we convert it to something else? Do we renovate it into better office? Um, they got to think through kind of what are the circumstances with the individual property, with its location, with its market, and also with the larger circumstances of what's going on in the world economy right now. Um, another one, this is for my investments class. We actually had a local investor bring us a recent $90 million acquisition of apartments in a suburban area. And we had to do a full investment analysis and give them recommendations for any renovations or changes we would do to increase rents, um, to make the property more successful. And we had to come up with, um, you know, all the investment metrics that make real estate successful. Um, Remember I talk about that property tax consulting that sounded kind of um, not very exciting. Well, this was where our students actually got to do a mock property tax appeal hearing. So this is like a law setting. And they were talking about a, a retail building in Indiana and they had um, specific instructions on how to execute valuation on two different opposing sides. And then they had to present arguments um, about their own valuation and then present uh, a rebuttal arguments against the other side's valuation. And so they had a lot of fun trying to kind of take each other out and argue with each other. And um, so that was a lot of fun. 
Um, and then some problems that we discuss. Um, this was an old Coca-Cola bottling plant um, and had become a bus depot for our local um, public school district. And the developer came into town and actually uh, bought this property and then converted it into this massive mixed use development. It has a hotel in the historic bottling plant now. It has offices, it has apartments. It has a really cool food hall called the garage. And um, I actually did the initial consulting when I was in industry to help them figure out what to do there. And so I actually talked through students through how they made their decisions, how they knew what to do. And we call it's called the highest and best use process. And we have an entire class built around how to use this process to determine how, what to develop where, how to make things successful. And that students use that process to propose their own developments. Um, we'll also talk about why some properties are never successful. This is the one on the right is a high-end shopping center in a suburban area, and it's never been successful. It was built in 2005 and it's never once made money. And we talk about what went wrong. Did they put uh, that in the wrong location? Were the area demographics suitable for that type of development? Um, did they use the wrong type of debt? Did they um, not manage the tenants properly? So we talk through those kinds of issues. Um, another one we'll talk about is how do we deal with what we call dying malls? There's a lot of shopping malls in the United States. In fact, during the 1980s and 1990s, they used to build hundreds every single year. And so we have these huge shopping malls and they're not really suitable anymore because it's not how people shop. Most of the time we're shopping on Amazon and what we're buying is coming from a warehouse. Um, and so we'll talk about what can we do to save this real estate from just demolition. And one of the examples we talk about is um, a very large uh, shopping mall in Ohio that cost uh, something like $300 million to build in the 1980s. And it's ne it was never successful and they just managed to tear it down. We'll also talk about the one pictured here where they actually did what we call demalling. They tore down part parts of it to make it more of like an open air shopping center. So we'll talk about how do we make those decisions. Um, the one on the right, this is called the um, Mira Theater, which is um, an actual concert venue downtown Indianapolis. And we'll talk about how do you decide what a highly specialized building like this with historic architecture is worth. We'll talk a lot about valuation. How do we use different techniques to determine what things are worth? And this is actually a property I appraised twice. So I have some insights into how complex this is, and we'll spend a lot of time talking about that with students. Now, we've been talking a lot about doing real estate as a business major, as a double major, but we actually have a program called the Real Estate Certificate that is for non-business majors. So if you're interested in real estate and you don't actually want to study business, maybe you want to be in a STEM field or health sciences, we have people from nursing and um, you know, informatics and other areas that are interested in real estate, and they'll actually come and take our real estate certificate. So you're going to take all the real estate classes except for that workshop, which is our the capstone for business students. And you're also going to take some fundamental finance courses, and it ends up being 15 credit hours um, plus one prerequisite, so a total of 18 credit hours. It's going to give you a lot of additional career options um, and allow you to pursue personal interests. We have um, economic students who are in the liberal arts school who want to also study real estate, and that's a great natural pairing. Um, we have students who are in construction management, tourism management, into hospitality like hotels, and they'll study both. Um, it allows you to combine a lot of skill sets, and I am a great example of this because I was an English major. I was someone who liked to study literature, and I got into real estate, and if I'd had this opportunity when I was in college, it would have been great for me because I would have been able to pursue a career in real estate a lot easier. So the ideal majors to pair with it are, you know, anything like economics, geography, data science, media. Those people tend to be very analytical and really data driven and um, really good at understanding location. And so that is a great pairing. We also have people who are great communicators and um, who like to understand how people operate or work or you know, maybe even language majors. We've had French majors before. Um, people who are great at communicating and great at learning how to learn, um, like English and communications majors and psychology majors are great. 
construction management, art, interior design, these are a great pairing. There's a lot of aspects of real estate that are very creative. And so a lot of people like to understand how real estate works because they're going to be a part of it, maybe on the design end. And then, of course, anybody who's interested in policy, law, civics, public affairs, tourism, events management, these are great natural pairings as well because um, a lot of those people go to law school or they get into working for municipalities um, and choose, helping guide the direction of how a city is developed. We recently had someone who she was um, from the School of Public and Environmental Affairs and sh where she had gotten her um, degree in public policy and she was working for the city of Indianapolis and she is guiding community development. And so she spoke to our students about the two acre site that they're working on a project for about what the city would like to see there. What are the priorities of the community? What kind of incentives they might offer? in order to see this developed in such a way that they that contributes to the overall community. So these are great pairings and um, will add a lot to um, a real estate community, the real estate community that we have. Um, we like to have different perspectives and we always have a, a large diversity of students in terms of backgrounds and interests in our program. And that is it um, for me in terms of my presentation. I'd love to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was super interesting. I really appreciate your presentation. And I think the students were also really enjoying learning um, about real estate and what kinds of options there are out there for careers and um, what our program would look like here at IU Indianapolis if they wanted to come and study real estate, either as a business major or it sounds like pretty much any of our other amazing programs. You could also um, combined with real estate and have a lot of additional opportunities in terms of career prospects. So that's super exciting. I do have a couple of questions that came in while you were talking that I starred. So I'll just ask you, um, you might have touched on this a little bit in the presentation, but maybe you can expand a little bit. Um, we have a question from Ishan asking, what are some of the job opportunities that students could get if they study real estate here at IU Indianapolis? Um, we have students go into every area of, um, of real estate that you can pretty much think of everything I discussed. I would say the most common are we have a lot of people who go work for companies like Simon that I mentioned, which is a, a public company that invests in real estate. We have a lot of students start there and then they can work their way through the corporate structure um, to rise up through that company. So they'll start in what's called a leasing analyst role, usually where you're learning all about the different leases that they have in place um, for, for property and understanding kind of the cornerstone of their investing business. We have a lot of students go become financial analysts or development analysts for different development companies. So uh, a lot of development analysts will go out and they're choosing sites or they might be going into a, an entirely different city. Maybe they're going into Raleigh, North Carolina, and they're looking at what the different sites are that are available, and they're analyzing their location and demographic characteristics, and they're coming back to their company and saying, okay, we want to build apartments here. This is the best location to put apartments in this market. We should go acquire this site. Or they're financial analysts where they're actually underwriting an entire new development and proving that they can build it and make it worth more than it costs to build, which is the cornerstone of financial feasibility. We have a lot of students go into that. We have students go into valuation, which is what I did. We just had one of our December graduates become an appraiser. She's working on her appraisal license through an apprenticeship right now. We have students go into brokerage. We had another one of our December grads. He is working for a brokerage team. That is the top multifamily team in the Midwest. They've done $7 billion in deals in the last five years. So he's doing really important work learning to be a broker. Um, and then we have students um, who go into um, banking. A lot of students go into the side where they're actually lending money for deals. Um, we have a student who's working at a company right now, a bank, where they do lending for apartments and uh, affordable housing. So kind of all over the map. We had a number of students last May who are pursuing law school to become real estate attorneys. Um, pretty much everything that I mentioned, we do have people who go into residential um, brokerage um, who do go into, we have one person who's flipping houses who graduated a couple of years ago. 
Um, so we have a broad variety uh, of asked every career path that I talked about. Those are the types of things that our st students are doing right here in Indianapolis. Um, and a lot of times it's um, they start in internships um, because we're in a city and we have these internships all around us. We have students right now who are working in internships while they're in school. So we have the opportunity to get internships all year round here. Um, so students are trying lots of different things uh, to find out what their favorite path is and what their passion is in real estate. I think that's a great answer. Thank you for all of those additional examples. I always tell students, like, don't just do one internship if you can do a couple, because no matter what your field of study is, there's a lot of different career paths that you can take with your degree. And so trying out different areas, figuring out if you want to work for a large company or a small family owned business, or do you want to work in a hospital or in a doctor's office, or do you want to work for, you know, there's, there's so many different options that the opportunities that you have to try things out with internships helps you figure out what you love and maybe also narrow down like, I don't know if I really like that area so much. And so it's great to kind of feel like you have some specific ideas of what you really want to do for a career once you graduate. Um, it looks like uh, we have a question. This is an excellent question, especially for our audience today. Will these real estate courses apply if we look for jobs internationally? So, yes, we don't specifically spend a lot of time on one. We obviously do spend a lot of time talking about real estate locally because it's great examples, but we don't focus on skills that can only be applied here. We focus on developing skills that can be applied around the world. Um, so you may know more about your country than I do. I would hope so anyway. Um, and you may actually teach me and that may inform how I teach in the future. So I am constantly trying to learn from our students. Um, I had a, whole, a couple of Kuwaiti students explain to me how real estate works in Kuwait. And we had a whole discussion about it. We talked about how they could apply the concepts we had learned in their home country if they wanted to go back and work in real estate there. Um, so basically, we're going to give you all the skills that you can take worldwide to work in real estate. Um, and you may have to adapt it to that local environment and the uh, resources that you have available. But we're teaching broad skills that will help you understand. So when we do market analysis, we're not learning about Indianapolis. We're learning about how do we learn about a place and how do we make decisions about um, real estate in a place. So we're going to be teaching broad skills that'll help you work in real estate anywhere in the world. And I love that. I love that that makes things applicable for our international students if they end up going back to their home country or maybe somewhere else in the world, but also for our students who are from Indiana and Indianapolis. Um, you know, everything is just increasingly global. So it's entirely possible we'll have students who are from Indianapolis who end up having some amazing real estate career in another country on the other side of the world because of the skills and experiences that they've gained from their studies here at IU Indianapolis. Very cool. Um, we had one question come in asking about internships available to 11th grade students. That was a question from Rohan. I don't think we really right now offer any internship opportunities for high school students. I do know that our campus is starting to develop some summer programs for high school students. Um, I think the options right now are mostly available just for U.S. students because there isn't any housing, but I do know there's been talk at the campus level about increasing those summer opportunities for students with housing potentially available in the future. So that's something if you're um, maybe in like ninth, 10th, uh, 11th grade, possibly look out for those opportunities um, coming, not this coming summer, but maybe the summer after that. It's not an internship, but it might be a way for you to come to campus and get familiar with the city and the university and get some kind of hands-on experience in um, the field that you're interested in. In terms of like where you are, so if you're in India, for example, or I know we had students from Kenya, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, um, Canada, I think we have people all around the world joining us right now. If you're a high school student and you're interested in an in internship, 
Um, it, that's going to depend on the resources available where you are. But I would definitely encourage you, even as a high school student, to try to make some of those connections. If you can't get an internship, at least see if you can job shadow somebody who's in a career field that you might be interested in. Have a chance to sit down and talk to somebody who does a job that sounds interesting to you. Any additional information that you can get to help you figure out what university you want to go to, what career path you're looking at, how to narrow down your interests or expand your interests maybe is a better way to think about it even. Um, I would definitely encourage you to do that. We just don't have any opportunities that would really work. I don't even think for U.S. high school students, we don't really have internship opportunities through IU Indianapolis as of right now. Do you have anything that you might add to that, Sarah? I was going to say, um, if you don't have a profile on LinkedIn yet, you need to create a professional profile in there and start networking with industry professionals in areas where you think you might be interested. Um, there's a lot of them that you can follow on LinkedIn and you can actually, if you are particularly interested in what they do, you can reach out to them and potentially find out more. Um, so I would start thinking about those types of experiences. There's also programs um, like Project Destined. Once you're an international student here in the United States, you'll qualify to do online remote internships with them, um, even as a, a first year in college. So once you get here, if you're going to attend IU Indianapolis, there'll be opportunities that you can pursue to get internships right away. That's awesome. I think I actually just saw a question come through asking if there are in like any online courses. So I think you just answered there's some there's some online internships students could do when they get here. IU does offer online programs, but I think um, those are a little bit different in some ways than what we're talking about here. But there are some online uh, program options that you could look into through IU online if that's something you're interested in. Um, we have a question. Um, that came through in the chat, Sarah, asking about the combination of entrepreneurship and real estate. Would that be a good combination? Entrepreneurship is a you know, great thing to study if you want to get into real estate, because most people in real estate are entrepreneurs on some level. Um, we don't have an entrepreneurship major on our campus, but we do have what's called a venture creation certificate. So a lot of students who are interested in being entrepreneurs will come to our campus and they will major in you know, maybe accounting or finance or something, management, and they'll add the venture creation certificate and the real estate co-major because they want to be real estate entrepreneurs. And so they'll add both. Like I said, you can study lots of things while you're here. And we have a lot of ways for those programs to overlap. So you'll get credit for multiple majors taking just one class. So um, that's kind of what I would recommend if you come to our campus is to pursue the venture creation certificate. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we did have a question come through from David asking if you're a student athlete, can you still do a double major at IU Indianapolis? I yes. think the answer to that is yes. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, um, I have student athletes in my class and in my program all the time. Um, we have a student who was a cross country and track runner who com has completing our program right now. We've had students in soccer, um, students in swimming, students in softball, I mean, golf, tennis, you name it. Um, we, in fact, we have a current um, tennis player and a current soccer player who are doing our program. So absolutely. And in fact, because of the size of our campus, um, we are a very large campus. We have a lot of resources and opportunities, but our, the Kelly School of Business is a, um, we have a very tight knit small community with a lot of people to help you. And so, for example, one of the advisors reached out to me yesterday and asked if I could make an exception to help a student athlete schedule. And I was like, absolutely. So we're a lot more willing to work with um, students and help them along their way than maybe a larger, um, you know, less friendly setting. Um, so we're very cooperative and really work with the student athletes. Awesome. Great example. I was going to say yes, but you had a good, a good specific example. I love that. Um, Rohan had a question, was asking, would online courses or I think online courses help build their profile if they want to apply to the business course? And I think I can answer this. This is a question I get often from international students. And I think depending on where you're going to apply to university, 
every university has kind of different criteria and things that they look for. If you're applying to IU Indianapolis, we're not necessarily looking for um, an extensive list of extracurricular activities or things outside of school that you've done. Um, for admission just to the university, we really are looking at your high school curriculum, the grades that you've gotten in high school, that you were taking rigorous academic courses in high school and how well you've done in those courses. And that's it. Um, you don't have to stress out about having a giant resume of other things that you've done. Is it important to do things outside of the classroom? Absolutely, 100%. You should definitely pursue your other passions and interests and hobbies as much as you can along with focusing on your studies in high school. But that's not something that we look at at IU Indianapolis as much in terms of the admission criteria and admission process. If you're interested in applying to the Honors College, which is within IU Indianapolis, they have a kind of a separate program, some special classes students in the Honors College take and some opportunities that students in the Honors College have um, to do additional activities and things along with their studies, as well as scholarships. If that's something that you're interested in pursuing, they do require a resume and an essay and an interview as part of their selection process. And so that might be a time where you could highlight some of the additional things that you've done in terms of clubs or activities, if you've done some kind of an internship or maybe some job shadowing or different things to help prepare you for your area of study or career, you would be able to highlight those things through that honors college process. But every university in the U.S. is going to be a little bit different in terms of what they require for admission, what they require for scholarships, and how heavily they weight those things. I always tell students, most U.S. universities are not going to be looking for a student who just did a little bit of a thousand different things. It's really going to be in your best interest to think about maybe trying out some different things during high school, but then your junior and senior year, focus on the top things that you're really passionate and interested in. Um, there isn't like one extracurricular activity or one volunteer activity or one community service activity that any university is going to value higher than another one. It's based on what you're interested in, where your passions are. And the important thing about that is if you're really passionate and interested about it in that topic and in that activity, it's going to come through in your essay or in your interview or in how you represent that to the university. If you just joined a bunch of clubs just to say I'm in a bunch of clubs, that's not going to come through as kind of a genuine interest. Um, so sometimes students are worried about having a very long list of things in their profile. And I always try to reassure them that quantity is not as important as quality, if that makes sense. And it looks like maybe there's a couple more questions that came through. I think we're a couple minutes over, but let's see. Um, is it possible to combine business management and real estate marketing at a bachelor's level? So management, marketing, and real estate, I think is what that question is asking, Sarah. Yes, absolutely. It's done all the time. So um, I, always, I tell students there really is no limit other than your academic advisor might tell you, hey, I don't know how you're going to finish all these things in four years. You might have to slow down a little bit. But there, there really isn't a limit to the number of different things you can study as long as you can squeeze it in in the amount of time that you have. Absolutely. And like I said, we have a lot of students like accounting, finance, and real estate, that's pretty common. Uh, marketing, management, real estate, uh, management, HR, real estate. I mean, we often have students with three majors in the business school. And as long as they can fit it in and make it work, and usually um, they have the flexibility to do that, that's great. Awesome. The sky's the limit. Um, one last question, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. It looks like we have a question from David again. He says, so what if you're living in a country where you don't have a lot of opportunities for internships or community service volunteer, what's the best way to show your college admissions guide your ability or experience? And that's a great question, David. I think the way I would answer that question is be creative. Um, I think most U.S. universities realize students come from a lot of different places and a lot of different backgrounds. The opportunities that are available in one city or one country are not necessarily going to be the same as they are in another place. 
Um, so we take that into consideration for sure. Um, but this is an opportunity to kind of show your creativity. Maybe there are things that you're doing within your family or within your community that maybe aren't seen as kind of a traditional internship or volunteer community service, but you can um, kind of invent your own opportunities. Maybe there are things that you can do online, for example, um, if you don't have the local resources. Um, so I, I would say don't don't get too worried about that. Use the resources that you have. Be creative. And then also know that universities are aware that students are coming from all different backgrounds. And we definitely take that into consideration when we're reviewing students' applications and considering them for admission and scholarships and things like that. I think that's all we've got for today. We answered hopefully all of your questions. I wanna thank Sarah for joining us and giving us that great presentation today. And thank you for everybody who joined us um, live on the webinar. Um, please do feel free to send an email. Um, I'll go ahead and put our email again in the chat. It's iapply at iu.edu. If you have questions for me and for my team about IU Indianapolis or the admissions process, you can send those to that email address and we will get back to you. Um, if you have specific questions about the Kelly School of Business or about real estate, you can also email that email address and we will forward those to Sarah or to others in the Kelly team so that they can answer the specific business related questions. Um, and we will also be sending uh, participation certificates to your email address. So however, whatever email you use to register for the webinar, um, within the next few days, Monday or Tuesday, you should be getting those certificates. If for some reason you registered and then you don't get a certificate, you can also send that email to iapply at iu.edu and we'll figure out where things got crossed and we'll make sure you guys get those certificates. So that's all we've got. Thank you so much for joining us from all around the world. We really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.